Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify this radical expression with a binomial in the numerator and a binomial in the denominator. Now the first thing I like to do before I uh, get into this is I want to simplify all of my radical expressions. And I cannot simplify the square root of 5. I cannot square root of the square root of 15. However, I do know that my square numbers here, 4, 9, 16, 20, 20, no, yeah, 25. Um, I do know that the largest square number that evenly divides into 27 is 9. So therefore, I can break apart 27, the square root of 27, I can rewrite as the square root of 9 times 3. And I know what the square root of 9 is, that's 3, but I cannot simplify the square root of 3. So I'm going to want to simplify the square root of 27 as the square root of 3 times the square root of 3. The reason why I want to do that, you don't have to do that, but if you don't, then you're going to have to simplify at the end. And automatically already looking at this, when, when I'm going to have to multiply 15, I'm not going to want to multiply 15 times 27. Um, even if I have a calculator, it just adds in larger numbers. And if I didn't have a calculator, it's just going to take away more time. So now, the next thing I need to, do, need to do is multiply by my conjugate. So the conjugate of the square root of 15 minus 3 is going to be, um, ooh, I forgot. This is another important point. A lot of students will make the mistake and say, well, that's going to be then square root of 15 plus 3. But you got to be very, very careful with when we're dealing with the conjugate, we're dealing with the plus or the minus of the square root of 15, or the square root, or, or whatever your radical is, not of whatever the number is. So I got to make sure when I'm doing this, I think I might have made a mistake on number 5. Yeah, I think I forgot about that. So when I'm doing this type of problem, I got to make sure that I'm actually rewriting this. Rewrite this with my, square, with my constant in front. So therefore, that's going to be a negative 3 plus the square root of 15. Now you can see that I'm going to multiply by negative 3 minus square root of 15. So when you're multiplying by your conjugate, it's very important to have the positive as well as the negative of your square root. All right, so now I multiply that exact same term in my numerator. So I have negative 3 minus square root of 15. And it's also very important to make sure you put this in parentheses when you multiply, because you're multiplying a binomial times a binomial. You're not just multiplying negative square root of 5 times that. So it's very important to use parentheses. OK, so now I need to go ahead and use my lovely foil here. Um, so 3 times square root of 3, or 3 times negative 3, is going to be a negative 9 square root of 3. 3 square root of 3 times uh, negative square root of 15 is going to be a negative 3 square root of 45. Square root of 5, negative square root of 5 times negative 3 is going to be a positive 3 square root of 5. And then I have um, square root of 5 times 15 is going to, or negative square root of 5 times negative square root of 15 is going to be a positive square root of 50, 75. OK, and I'll go ahead and simplify those in a second. But let's go now to our denominator. Now again, our, the reason why it's nice to have the difference of two squares is now I have, I can just apply the difference of two squares. Then difference of two squares tells us that when we apply FOIL, our middle terms add up to 0 because they're going to be positive and they're going to be negative. So all I really need to do is just multiply my first two terms, which is not uh, negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. And then I'll multiply my last two terms, which is negative square root of 15 squared, which is just going to be 15. OK, so before I go ahead and um, simplify this, what I want to do is, again, rewrite each of my radicals in terms of, rewrite each of my radicals um, in terms of the squ largest squared number that evenly divides into them. And you can see that 45, 9 divides into 45, and 25 divides into 75. So therefore, I can rewrite this as negative 9 square root of 3 minus 3 times the square root of 9 times 5 plus 3 square root of 5 plus the square root of 25 times 3. That's all over. 9 minus 15 is negative 6. Now, I can take the square root of each of my square terms. So I have negative 9 square root of 3 minus um, square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 is negative 9 square root of 5. Then I have plus 3 square root of 5 plus square root of 25 is just 5 times the square root of 3. Now we look at my radicands. I'm sorry, again, this is divided by negative 6. Now we look at my radicands here. 
I'll put this over here. We look at my radicands, and I see that I can combine negative 9 squared of 3 and 5 squared of 3. So that's going to become negative 4 times square root of 3. And then I can combine my middle negative 9 squared of 5 and 3 squared of 5, which becomes a negative 6 square root of 5. And that is all divided by a negative 6. Now you could factor out or divide a 6 into both of them. And if you did, then you'd have a positive 2 thirds square root of 3 plus the square root of 5. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify your radical expression by rationalizing the denominator. Thanks.